this video, we're going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers with unlike denominators. In fourth grade, we practiced adding and subtracting mixed numbers when they have the same denominators. So really the only thing that's going to make this different is that we are going to make common denominators before we begin. So we're going to use the skill of finding the LCD. If you do not remember how to find your LCD, go back and watch the video on finding the least common multiple in order to find your least common denominator. Once we do that, let's talk about adding mixed numbers and the steps that we're going to take. You will start with your fractions. So you're gonna make your denominators match on your fractions and then you're going to add them. You may have an improper fraction at that point. If you do, you wanna simplify your improper fraction to make it a mixed number so that you have your fraction and you have your whole numbers. So now you have the fraction in your answer and you regrouped any whole number to add with your whole numbers. So go ahead and add them now. Go ahead and add those whole numbers. Now look at your answer, your whole number and your fraction. If your fraction needs to be simplified, make sure you do it before you circle your final answer. Now let's look at subtraction. And then we'll do two examples, one of each, one adding, one subtracting. So on the subtraction, your steps, you're gonna again start with your fractions. Do your fractions first. Make sure that you have made your fractions have common denominators. Now, when we go to subtract our fractions, you might have to regroup. So regroup if needed. Be careful when you regroup because remember, we're not operating in our base 10 anymore. We're now going to add, if we take one away from the whole, we have to regroup by making our denominator and numerator match and adding that to our existing fraction because we took it and broke it into that many parts. Now you can subtract your fractions. Once you've subtracted your fractions, subtract your whole numbers. Once you've subtracted your whole numbers, read your answer. Look at that fraction again. If it needs to be simplified, this is when you are going to simplify that answer. So we're now going to look at a couple examples. So I'm gonna put my notes off to the side and do my examples. I would have had to actually turn my page to do these examples. So do not tear your paper out. Go ahead and turn your page if you need to do that also and work on the back of your page. I put mine separate just in case I need to show you the notes again. I'm not flipping pages. Okay, so we're gonna start, remember, fractions first make common denominators. So let's start with our addition problem. I'm gonna go ahead and cover up our subtraction example so we can just focus on one thing. By the way, this is a fantastic strategy. If you get overwhelmed by seeing too many things, you will see I use covering all the time. Okay, fractions first. I have 7 eighths plus, I don't wanna forget I'm adding, I have a lot to do here, plus 5 sixths. Well, sixths and eighths are not the same size pieces. So I need to do a multiples chart with six and eight. Don't forget to put your factor of change in your chart. So times one, one times six is six, one times eight is eight. Two, two times six is 12, Two times eight is 16. I still do not have a match. Times three. Three times six is 18. Three times eight is 24. I still don't have a match. I'm now on times four. 
Four times six is 24. Stop right there. Check it out, guys. We have got a match. That is gonna be my common denominator. I'm gonna use times three for my factor of change with eights. I'm gonna use times four with my factor of change for sixths. So I'm now gonna come up to my fractions. And remember, I said with my eighths, I'm gonna get the 24. So my factor of change is times three. So I multiply the numerator and denominator times three, and seven times three is 21. Now I come to my sixth. Now remember, we're making our sixth into the common denominator of 24. How did I get there? Times four. Six times four is 24. Five times four is 20. Now, if you're really strong with your basic facts, you might not need to do this step down here. So we're gonna put it in our notes just in case we need it. Now, remember we're adding. So now that my denominators match, they're both 24, I can now add my numerators. So I have 21 plus 20 is 41 24 ths Now, what you notice about 41 24 ths is that it is an improper fraction. And we learned in fourth grade that to make an improper fraction into a mixed number, we take our numerator divided by our denominator. So I can make one group of 24. So let me kind of do a little thought bubble under here for you. What I just said to you was I have 41 divided by 24. I can make one group and one times 24 is 24. I subtract, be careful there with your regrouping, and I have a remainder of 17. So that means I have 17 out of 24 left. So that's 17 out of 24. This is my mixed number, 17 24 ths This one right here needs to go with the whole numbers. Now I'm ready to add my whole numbers. So I now have one plus four is five plus one is six. So I have six. So now what I wanna do is my final answer is six and 17 24 ths. Remember I said, take a look at that fraction. Well, 17, this is where prime and composite number learning really helps us. 17 is a prime number. It only has the factors of one and seven. 20, one and 17, I'm sorry, one and 17. 17 is not a factor of 24. So therefore, that is a simplified fraction. So my final answer is going to be combining these for six and 17 24 ths. When I have my final answer, I wanna make sure I circle it. So that is my final answer. Now let's look at a subtraction example. I'm gonna cover the addition example. Remember, you're on video. You can pause this, you can replay it if you need to watch it again. Okay, now let's take a look at subtraction. Fractions first, we always go fractions first. So we look at these fractions. I have three tenths and three fifths. My denominators do not match. So step one, make a match, find your LCD. Well, what I know about five, this is where your facts comes in handy. I know five times two is 10. So I know I don't have to change my three tenths. I'm gonna change my three fifths times two. Whatever I do to the denominator, I do to the numerator. So now I have six tenths. 
So now I'm ready to subtract my fractions. But I have 3 tenths minus 6 tenths. I'm going to have to regroup. I need more tenths if I want to take six of them away because currently in my pile, I have these one, two, three, and I want to take six. Well, that's not going to work for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to this eight and I'm going to say, okay, I want to take one of these eights away. That leaves seven whole in my pile and I have this one of these eight. Now, I need to now break this, this one, I need to break that into 10 equal pieces. So I have these three, they haven't gone anywhere. So now what I need to do is I need to go and I need to get, how many do you think? How many tenths does it take if I'm breaking this one that I took from my pile and you are correct, it is going to take 10 tenths. Now, if you have fraction strips, you're actually not going to probably have enough because we have these three down here. So what I did is I went to another bag because I happen to have two sets. So if you need to make yourself another set, you can do that if you need to use your fraction strips. Otherwise, there are a lot of online manipulatives that you can use and I've given you some of the websites if you are in my class. So you can use an online math manipulative website to help you if you need them. So now we took this one from the pile. Now we have seven left in the pile. We took that one and we broke it into tenths. So now what we have is we have these three tenths plus ten tenths so we now have 13 tenths. And I want to take six of those tenths away. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And now remember, this is gone. We traded that out. So now that I took those six tenths away, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because 13 tenths minus six tenths is seven tenths. So now I'm going to go ahead and deal with my whole numbers. So I come over here, I have seven minus one is six. Now let's take a look at your answer. Does your fraction need to be simplified? Well, we have a prime number again. Seven is a prime number. So it only has the factors of one and seven. Seven is not a factor of 10. So this is a simplified fraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write that for you, what I just said to you, in case anybody is struggling with simplifying fractions. One times seven equals seven, there's no other facts. That's why it's prime right there. 10 is a composite number. I not only have one times 10, I have two times five. Well, the only common factor is one, and that means they're simplified. If one is your only common factor, then your fraction simplified. So now I can go ahead and circle my answer.